Movie review is here today. I'll explain a thriller movie titled Down Spoiler Ahead. Watch out and take care. Two persons who work at the same building got stuck in the elevator one day. No one is supposed to come there and save them for the next three to five days. We will see a twist in the movie when we come to know why they got stuck. Is a thriller movie which came out in the year 2001. This movie has many twists and turns, which is very exciting at the beginning of the movie. We see our main character Jennifer working in her office. She's working late today. And and there is no one in the office with her. Some days ago, she and her fiancé broke up over a fight, and she decided to surprise him. During the weekends, she wrote an email but couldn't send it to him as it was a surprise. In the next scene, we see Matt, the other main character, getting ready to leave the office. He gets into the same elevator. But on a different floor, Matt tries to make Jennifer feel comfortable by cracking jokes and making her laugh. There is a drawing made on the lift as Matt attempts to show Jennifer the drawing. The elevator suddenly gets stuck in the middle, even though there is electricity. They try to ring the alarm, but nothing is working when Jennifer notices the camera. The two waves at it, but no one is there to help them. There is no signal as well, so that they can call anyone and ask for help. They are trapped here for five days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the two days off. Matt then informs Jennifer that he has just recently joined the office some days ago, and that he doesn't know much about this lift. Jennifer tells Matt that this lift sometimes makes unusual sounds. She thinks that this is the reason why it got stuck. Matt brings an idea that they can go out from the exit of the lift. He tries to jump and open it but couldn't reach it, so he takes Jennifer on his shoulder, and she tries to open the exit but couldn't. After an hour, Jennifer realizes that she has missed her flight. She becomes mad and starts blaming and abusing everything. She became thirsty, so Matt gives her his bottle. She refuses to drink from his bottle, so Matt tells Jennifer that they only have a bottle of water and a bottle of wine, asking her to decide what she wants. Matt jokingly adds that she has a wine opener as well. Hearing this, Jennifer also shows him an opener that she carries in her purse. Both start laughing at this, she drinks the water and then she offers mad chocolate as well. She then tells him they have to think before using anything, as they could be stuck here for five days with limited resources. Eventually, four more hours have passed, and now she has to pee, but she feels shy being in the elevator in front of Matt. He then gives Jennifer a bottle, telling her not to feel awkward about it. Because it's natural, she then asks him to turn around as she pees in the bottle. She has accepted the reality now that they are stuck and can't do anything about it. Jennifer completed the drawing made on the wall of the elevator. She then asked Matt if he has any girlfriend who will call the police if she doesn't go home. Matt says there is no one. Jennifer then tells Matt about her fiancé that she is planning to surprise him, but because they are stuck here inside the elevator and her arrival is supposed to be a surprise, her fiancé will never know she's stuck here. Both of them realize that they are the same, that both of them have no one that will come looking for them. They start making drawings of each other. Matt draws a beautiful picture of Jennifer, but she draws a funny picture of him seeing this. She feels bad and tells him that she will keep this drawing as her profile picture while talking. They start discussing food. Both of them became hungry, so Jennifer says that they should change the subject. They then discuss different stories. At one point, they begin to discuss crazy stories about their partner and themselves. Jennifer says that there was one this time when her boyfriend and she hooked up in a library. Matt is feeling shy, and then he says that one time he and his co-worker went on a drive and they got intimate while talking about this. He starts to grow feelings for Jennifer. She seems to be okay with this. Afterwards, they get intimate. Matt then tells her that he could fall in love with her. Jennifer feels very weird about this and tells him that they should forget about what happened. She loves her fiancé and wants to go back to her. Matt gets hurt after hearing what she said, telling her that he thought that they have a connection between them. He further asks her if she doesn't feel anything for him. She tells him that there is nothing between them, and she has been with her fiancé for years, so they have a different level of understanding between them. Matt, like they are far away from each other, even though they are stuck here together. As tears roll down Matt's cheeks, Jennifer adds that they don't even know each other that well. Suddenly, Matt's behavior gets changed. He then shows her the CCTV footage on his phone, telling her that he always used to watch her whenever she comes and goes. Here we learn that Matt is a security guard in this building. He lied about his job as he told Jennifer earlier that he's an accountant in this building. He then confesses that he has done all this. He has planned everything he wanted to know and talk to Jennifer. He also wanted her to know him. 
Then he takes out the keys from his pocket and starts to lift. Jennifer becomes mad and yells at him. She threatens him that she will call the police and he has to pay for this hearing. Jennifer gets scared and tries to start the lift again, but Matt grabs her while this is happening. The key breaks, truly trapping them inside out of anger. She starts beating him with her shoe, making him unconscious. She then comes close to him to check, but Matt suddenly pulls her hair and bangs her head on the floor, making her unconscious as well. After both of them return to their senses, Matt tells her that the plan was really good. They could have known each other better. Matt knows that it seems like they have completed their relationship. They met here, they came to know each other, and now they have broken up. Just then, Matt sees the gift that Jennifer brought with her to give to her fiancé. He opens the package and finds a shirt in it. He wears it. He also has a gift and gives it to her. The box contains two cigars, a lighter, and a cutter in it. He starts behaving like a maniac and breaks a light inside the lift. He starts throwing his bottle at the ceiling door, eventually opening it. He asks her to support him so that he can go up and open the door, but she doesn't believe him and tells him that she will go instead. She reasons out that she can easily climb up to open the elevator because she weighs less than him. Matt starts doubting her, but she convinces him by saying that she won't betray him. She also tells him that they know each other now and have spent so much time together. So why should she betray him? He helps her to climb up, and as soon as she goes up, she betrays him. This disturbs Matt a lot. He then ties all his clothes one after another and make a rope, and using this, he climbs up. Somehow Jennifer is already halfway, and he's about to open the door of the elevator when Matt comes from behind and pulls it down. Both of them fall down again at the same lift. They are now both injured. After Jennifer wakes up, she realizes that Matt is still unconscious. She notices the fire alarm and catches fire with the help of the lighter that he gave her. After a while, Matt gets his senses back and tells her that no one will come to save them. Jennifer hits him again and ties him. She then tells him that he has to confess everything they will get out soon, and she doesn't want to go to the court and take any blame. So Matt has to confess. She also threatens him that she will hurt him a lot if he doesn't confess so he confesses everything and records it. Jennifer asks him finally why he did all this. Matt replies that he likes her a lot for a long time. He always used to watch her, and she's very beautiful. As he's a security guard, he couldn't approach her. He also tells her this story. He was not a security guard before he used to work as an accountant and had a lot of money. The story he told her earlier about his co-worker was not a lie while they were hooking up. His co-worker had an accident, and she died. He was charged due to this and was arrested. He spent a lot of money, and in six months he got out. But after coming out, he was not getting any jobs, and eventually his financial condition was also deteriorating. So he was bound to do this job of a security guard. He father tells her that he wants to get his old life back, and that's why he did all this. In the next scene, we see a man who works with Matt, He's also a security guard. He arrives at the building with his girlfriend. He wants to show his girlfriend the terrace of the building he was not supposed to come today as he was on leave and eventually he came. Then he notices that Matt is not there. So he checks the footage and finds out Matt and Jennifer are stuck inside the lift. He comes to them as fast as he can and tries to open the lift. The gate opened a little bit. Just then, he rushed to grab his keys. In the meantime, Matt strikes Jennifer and makes her unconscious. The man comes back and gives his keys to Matt. Matt then asks him to climb up as he needs help as soon as he gets inside a little bit. Matt stops the lift and kills him. Then he comes out of the building with Jennifer and puts her in the trunk of his car, then goes to his locker, takes a bath, and wears his uniform. He comes to the lobby, and there he finds his friend's girlfriend. She comes to him and asks him about her boyfriend. In response, he says that he has already left. She feels kind of suspicious and is about to leave just then. Matt attacks her from behind and kills her as well. Then he takes Jennifer to an empty road. He then comes out of the car and brings out Jar of Patrol. He is planning to kill her as soon as he opens the car's trunk. He finds it to be alive. She wastes no time and attacks him. She gets in the car and drives forward as fast as he can. When she looks back, she realizes that Matt is still alive. So she reverses the car and hits him with it and kills him in the process. Then she dumps his body in the dustbin and lights a fire. And the movie ends here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video. Bye for now.